What's up, everybody? And today I've got with me my good friend Epos Vox, the amazing voice himself, a professional tech YouTuber, here to talk about tips for starting your own YouTube gaming channel. So this is gonna be a three-part video series where today we're talking about equipment, everything that you need, the necessities, a lot about capture cards, and a little bit about microphones. In part two, which is gonna be hosted on Epos's channel, we're talking about content, developing style, editing tips, thumbnails, and then in part three, growth, long-term strategies to help you guys sort of get out of the first rut of 100 subscribers and move forward into growing your passion into something that you enjoy and get to do more and more. So what is up, Epos? How you doing today? Let's dive into this one. Doing all right. Ready to talk some capture cards. I actually have an entire box of them sitting in front of me, so. Epos is like the master of capture cards. This guy has reviewed more than anybody else that I know. <laughs> Starting off, what are the necessities for someone to start a YouTube gaming channel? Like the bare bones, what do I need to put videos up online? It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, you see a lot of crazy setups with 12 screens and two computers and three consoles, and you don't really need all that much anyway. Um, if you're doing a console-based capture system, you just need a basic microphone a basic capture card or if you if you know if that's still too far out of your budget and you're really just getting started ps4 and xbox one let you record on the console themselves that's an option and some sort of editing software or way to actually get your video up to youtube and again the ps4 actually has an editor built in if you're like just really starting out and don't have anything to work with so investment though a lot of people when they get into youtube we've seen both sides of the coin somebody who buys a dazzle and then isn't excited <laughs> that they're uploading 480p video or whatever and then the guy who goes out there spends two grand on equipment gets no sub growth within a month gives up and feels like he wasted his money so what does the cost to reward ratio really look like honestly it comes to what you expect to spend time on it and what you expect to get out of it if you if you're expecting to get a you know thousands of, sub of subscribers right out of the gate you kind of got to tone that approach, you know, your expectations down a little bit, but you you obviously have as much room to spend as much as you like, but I I recommend starting out pretty pretty low key as well. And it, this is kind of like a higher end topic, but like also if you start out with the highest possible like quality equipment and your viewers can tell, but your content isn't great, which we're going to talk about in the next couple parts of the series, then it, it creates a disconnect with your viewers and that was an issue for me as well as I had I, I grabbed the highest quality mic I could when I started out and then everyone was confused why my videos weren't very good so I suggest getting you know what works that you can hook up easily and just get recording and have fun with it rather than spending you know six hundred dollars like you can get a basic setup for like 300 total or less and if you already have a computer and things like that you don't need to be spending a lot of money yeah i guess the soft assumption here when we're talking about a capture card you ultimately will need a computer that is capable right. of handling that capture card recording and a bit of exporting so when you're starting i think you need to gauge your own interest before you break the bank youtube can and should be a gradual investment both epos and i have seen a lot of folks come and go over the years who've <laughs> made significant investments into gear that didn't get a lot of use. It's not a one-to-one -one thing. Like, the more money I put into this will not always equal out more subscribers. But at the same time, there's a certain expected level of quality. Right. So with all of that said, let's talk about capture cards. Let's start with the full gamut. Elgato seems to be the front runner right now for the console market, and they make some damn good capture cards. They make some of the best uh, and only because they keep working on their software but you have the elgato lineup which there's like five different capture cards now and i hear they might be coming out with a couple really cool ones next year so we'll have to see about that um but and they all do almost the same thing you just have options once you get in the more technical details of what you need but there's also avermedia they put out a couple really good gamer ones lately and they actually have one that doesn't require a computer to record you still need a computer to edit of course um, the Live Gamer Portable 2. There's Black Magic, which has been the old grandpa of the capture card market. And then the Hapage, which is kind of the 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 estranged old, cousin yeah. of the market. Mm -hmm. that I honestly recommend you avoid. But there, there's lots of there, there's lots of cards out there. And I have a few reviews up on my channel of quite a few different cards that we will have linked in the card and description down below. Uh, the essentially what you want to look for is what your computer can handle because a lot of the newer ones are going to be usb 3.0 which yep. requires a kind of high-end computer but if you get the basic elgato game capture hd 
pretty much any computer can use it. You, you, you will be able to use it. Whether or not you have to turn down the settings or what have you may change based on what computer you have. But if you have a computer, you can use the baseline Elgato. Uh, if yeah. you get into some of the more higher end ones, it will obviously cost you more money, but it'll take up a lot more you know, computer resources to capture too. So you yeah. really got to consider what you have. Let's talk about that for a second. So the Elgato Game Capture, the basic one, can record 1080p 30fps on both PS4 and Xbox One. It will not record 60fps. That is reserved for the HD60 line of cards. So that would be the HD60, the HD60 Pro, and the HD60S. All three of those are solid options. You've had a chance to work with all of those cards. My question would be, if you're getting involved right now, and you want to support 60 FPS, which of those three would you choose? The HD60S, the HD60, or the HD60 Pro? And keep streaming in mind when we're talking about these cards too. Right, uh, definitely pretty much, I, I would recommend avoiding the original HD60 at this point. It has a lot of audio desync issues, which means as you're recording or streaming over time, your microphone no longer is lined up with your gameplay. And it's like impossible to fix because it's not just like, it's faster or slower it's just you could be like 10 minutes early at one point and then right on time the next point it's really strange the hd60 pro is an internal capture card for desktops only so again you gotta gotta know the technology that you have available to you the hd60s is one of those usb 3.0 cards we mentioned but it is perfect for live streaming you have no delay no desync and it supports full 1080p 60 and it produces very high quality video so that's something I would definitely keep in mind if you want to stream down the road. I'd stay away from the HD60. And to be quite frank, the actual original game capture has a lot of those annoying desync issues for streaming. At least that's been my experience with XSplit. Would you agree with that? You're more of an OBS user, but that original game capture, having to set the audio offset between the video and the audio was a pretty frustrating thing, I think. Yes, that is essentially why I never streamed all that much when that was the only capture card I had. Uh, so yeah, it's not a whole lot of fun if you're streaming. Uh, however, on the other side of things, the Aver Media cards generally don't have any of those issues, especially if you're using something like OBS to live stream or XSplit. Uh, they're a little, they're not as intuitive in terms of trying to do your research about them or buying them. Like the Elgato software is on point in terms of you know what you need to do. The Aver Media is more on a higher level of technical know-how or at least until you look up some tutorials, but they never have those desync issues. They never have the delay. They are really, really good on that front if you want to put in the time for it. Hmm, totally. Well, then let's talk about PCs for a second here. What would be a nice baseline for a computer, somebody to use for recording? Like you mentioned, editing can work on almost anything, just depending on how patient you are, right? Right. For recording itself, you do have some restraints that you'll want to consider. Now, again, with the baseline Elgato and some older capture cards, you can record on a, you can record on like a 10 year old laptop if you set things up right. But it's going to be a nightmare of an experience. If you have a modern computer with at least a quad core or they have a lot of laptops nowadays that are technically dual cores, but they emulate a quad core. It's complicated, but like Intel i3, i5 or i7. Anything that's like that or a quad core. At least eight gigabytes of RAM is recommended. That's becoming the standard now. If you have a four gig computer, you're still gonna be fine. And then the ideal situation, which is going to be a dividing point for a lot of people, especially laptop users, but a dedicated graphics card will make the world of difference for your recording experience because you're, the software can use that graphics card. You pretty much eliminate any lag or recording hiccups you might have. Uh, a, a lot of laptops and a lot of pre-built computers won't necessarily have it, but a lot of them do. And it's just kind of a balance of what you already have, what you can afford. If you can upgrade, if you have a desktop, you can get a cheap, you know, $80 used graphics card that will serve you amazingly. Um, and then I generally recommend a second hard drive. That's a totally more in-depth topic. But even if you have, as long as it's USB 3.0, an external hard drive, that's still better than recording to like a laptop internal hard drive. So. I've got yeah. more videos on that on my channel if you want more details, but you want a second hard drive. Just remember that. It prolongs the life of your computer. I think a lot of people who get into YouTube start using their laptop. They record on that internal drive that what is like, is it 5400 RPM yeah. that they run at? 
and then they export and render on that thing so it gets super hot and it decreases the lifespan of that drive significantly when you're using a secondary drive just for recording because rec recording is like abusive on drives would yeah. you say you're constantly reading and writing to it throughout the edit and render process so like you said even a usb3 external drive can be a better option than shredding your internal main laptop drive Right, because the worst thing you want to do is have spent all night on this video, tell it to render while you go to bed or something, and then wake up the next morning and the laptop is just a blue screen forever. So we're going to talk about software and editing programs in part two, which is going to be over on your channel. But real briefly, what kind of software would somebody be looking at if they're on the PC or if they're on the Mac side of things? And how much does somebody want to invest? I think this goes to our original thought of cost to reward ratio. Right. If you're just starting out, I don't recommend spending a lot of money at all because video editing is a crazy, like intensive educational process. And you may jump in saying, I want the best of the best, but then three hours into trying to figure out how to edit a basic video, you're going to be tearing your hair out. On the Mac side of things, iMovie comes pretty much with all versions of Mac OS and I I'll just go with it. That's all you really need. On the Windows side of things, they only give you, and they don't even give it to you built in anymore, but Windows Movie Maker, which is usable, but isn't great. There are free alternatives. There's HitFilm 3 and maybe 4 Express now, which is very similar to the more expensive Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, and then DaVinci Resolve is also free, but it's a very professional level software that will take a lot of learning. If you want a super easy to use software and, want, and don't mind spending a tiny bit of money comparatively to the higher end software, uh, Adobe Premiere Elements, CyberLink Power Director, and Camtasia Studio are all generally less than $100 for a lifetime license, and they are very easy to use compared to the higher end stuff. And it, it'll do everything you honestly need for YouTube pretty much forever if you never want to actually learn anything mm -hmm. about it. You and I both are on the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. We've been editing with Premiere right. for quite some time. Fantastic piece of software. We've both used Sony Vegas. It's also a great editing piece of software. I've used Final Cut Pro for years, both version 7. I haven't used uh, 10 a whole lot, although that program is getting a lot of updates that some creators are seeming to enjoy quite a bit. But all of those programs are a much steeper investment, and I think you hit the nail on the head. Editing takes a lot of time, and nothing is right. worse than, let's say, you throw 500 bucks at some editing software, and then you don't know how to use it for weeks on end test these alternatives i think premiere elements would be a fantastic way to go because it is that lifetime license no subscription and a great way to learn and then if you want to upgrade there you go the creative cloud subscription is right there all right and the best part for me for premiere elements is that the actual workflow is almost exactly the same as in terms of basic functionality as all of the higher end stuff like if you start with premiere elements you're going to be able to learn premiere pro like instantly mm. so it's it's a great starting place in terms of actually learning it. Industry-wide, I bet 90% of the people making gaming YouTube content are using Adobe Creative Cloud software. So that's why we're emphasizing that so much. Would you agree with that? There's a lot of folks on that. Oh, now. yeah. Vegas used to be the main, but it kind of became a lot less reliable. And then Sony sold it off. And so Adobe's been the like forefront of what people who are serious about it use. Totally. All right. Our last section today, what type of microphone? And this is so <laughs> hard because you can throw stupid amounts of money at a mic. And I guess all I would say is I want the mic to be at a level where it's not distracting. I will say right now, my current microphone setup that you're hearing and may not believe this, but that what you're hearing total probably costs around $2,000 if I bought every brand, every single component brand new. At the same time, I had a friend who just shared a raw microphone sample with me from another microphone that sounded that cost $50 and I was impressed by it compared to my setup. So, don't look at the high-end mics and act like and think that that's what you need to get. It's not at all. Um there's a couple basic like industry we say industry and even though i guess youtube might be an industry now but kind of standard options that youtubers go with which would be something like the uh, samsung medium mic is a very easy starting point it's not the greatest mic in the world same thing with the blue snowball but it will get you there without having your viewers like cry at your audio uh, they are considered cardioid condenser microphones but they just hook up by usb you can hook it up to a laptop desktop i think some of them even work with smartphones now and record pretty decent audio. If you want to invest a little bit more money, you have the Audio-Technica AT2020 and the Blue Yeti, which are both fantastic microphones, 
and there are some people who went all the way up to like millions of subscribers on YouTube and never upgraded microphones past that point because they don't need to. Yeah, if you guys are curious, Diddy on the Destiny of the Show podcast uses an AT2020 and they sell a USB version, which actually is pretty helpful for a new creator getting into things who doesn't want to spend a bunch of money on an actual preamp or uh, an external sound card type of deal. What I would say is that YouTube is a marathon and not a sprint. Having the greatest equipment doesn't automatically give you that success, but the microphone, I feel almost more than any other part of the production pays off leaps and bounds so if you're somebody who really is looking to do this for longer than like six or seven months you're invested into it take time listen to a lot of reviews listen to different microphones and really make up your mind and, and there's stuff that you can do to improve the sound of your mic like just by changing your environment right epos right absolutely that's Honestly, one of the most important parts when considering your microphone as well as there's a couple different microphones and things like that. But your actual environment is 90% of your audio quality. Uh, if you have your air conditioning on, a fridge nearby, people talking near you, all of those are going to get picked up by your microphone. And even the best noise removal in a software can't like account for actual big bad background noise. So you need to be shutting doors, shutting windows, turning off any loud appliances. If you have a computer, try to locate it away from your microphone more so, you know, under your desk, behind your desk. Uh, some people record their MatPat from the Game Theory, who is now like a huge channel, started recording his audio in a closet. That's pretty common because closets honestly sound like if, if they have a lot of clothes and stuff, they sound like a radio studio because the clothes dampen the ambient noise. And so uh, most of your audio quality is going to be what you do in your recording setup, not what microphone you have. Awesome. Well, that's sort of the full gamut of equipment and stuff you need to get in. We could talk about this for a whole lot longer. If you have specific questions, let us know, like down in the comment section below. Epos and I will be looking very carefully. If there's a capture card in particular you have a question for, definitely leave it down there. We'll have a full playlist of recommended capture cards and reviews from Epos. And stay tuned because part two is coming up very shortly. You can click on this little guy on screen to subscribe to Epos's channel. And we're going to be talking in part two about making successful content. Production quality, creating style, thumbnail tips, editing stuff. Epos is one of those people who actually helps strategize YouTubers to create better content and have channels grow. So we're looking forward to the series. If you guys enjoyed it, let us know with a like. Thanks, Epos, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.